Hello, my name is Marcos Jimenez, and I'll be doing my presentation today on the Maillard reaction. So a general overview of my presentation today, the Maillard reaction is common in everyday cooking and food. It gives food more depth and flavor. It's similar to caramelization, but it is slightly different and provides a different outcome. And it's a chemical reaction between amino acids and sugar molecules. So I'll be first talking about the person who discovered the Maillard reaction, which is Louis Camille Maillard. He's a French physician and chemist. Um, he was born February 4, 1878 in Pont-de-Mousson, France. And he passed away in May 12, 1936 in Paris, France. He discovered the Maillard reaction in 1912 at the age of 34. He received a master's degree in science from the University of Nancy. And he also received a PhD in medicine from the same university. And when World War I broke out, he enlisted in the French army to serve his country. And after the war, he went to Algeria to fulfill a position with the Department of Pharmacy at the Faculty of Medicine. So what is the Maillard reaction? So the Maillard reaction is a series of chemical reactions between sugars and amino acids. And the Maillard reaction provides browning on food that gives off distinct flavor with more depth. And this cannot occur without the presence of high heat. Uh, the Maillard reaction needs a temperature between 140 to 165 degrees Celsius. If not, uh, this reaction cannot take place. And like I said before, it provides new flavors, colors, and smells that make food taste so much more better. And here I have um, pictures of different foods that undergo the Maillard reactions. So I have some coffee beans, toasted marshmallows, uh, freshly baked cookies, rotisserie chicken, a steak, uh, toasted, toasted toast, I guess, and some dumplings or pot stickers. And now we'll be talking about caramelization. So caramelization is similar to the Maillard reaction, but it's slightly different. And this is due to the fact that caramelization has a higher ratio of sugars. So instead of amino acids and sugars reacting primarily, um, sugars and sugars will react with one another. They will form and break and reform and break. And when caramelization occurs, it is still possible for the Maillard reaction to occur. It just depends on the ratio of, um, of the molecules that you have in the food. So higher sugars mean caramelization. And when there's more amino acids, then a uh, Maillard reaction can take place. And yeah, the caramelization also gives food more flavor and depth. Um, yeah. So when it comes to steak, boiling a steak produces a gray outcome. And this is due to the fact that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And like I mentioned before, um, the Maillard reaction needs a temperature of 140 to 165 degrees Celsius. So it's not hot enough for the Maillard reaction to take place. And when you do cook a steak, and um, yeah, when you do cook a steak, and you want the Maillard reaction to occur. You want to get your steak as dry as possible. You need a high temperature on your cooking utensils or the thing you're going to cook it in, such as a cast iron or a stainless steel pan. And you also, yeah, you don't necessarily have to cook your steak in the pan the entire time. You could also, there's different methods of cooking it. 
So you can get the internal temperature to where you want by reverse searing your steak or sous vide it and then finishing off in a cast iron or a stainless steel pan. And this provides the Maillard reaction and a nice crust that you get. And now I'll be talking about my ribeye that I cooked the other day. So my roommate gifted me a ribeye the other day. So I cooked it and I started off the cooking process by taking it out of the fridge, laying it rest, get to room temperature. And then I dried it off with some paper towels. And once it was dry in that room temperature, I applied kosher salt and um, freshly ground black pepper. And then I preheated my oven to 275 degrees. Once it reached 275 degrees, I threw in the, I threw in the steak to uh, reverse sear. And once it reached a internal temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I pulled it out and I threw it on the cast iron that I also had preheated in the oven. And then I applied some oil to the cast iron, threw in my steak and let it sear on both sides for about two minutes. And then when those two minutes were up, I applied some butter and threw in some garlic and I butter basted it for about 45 seconds. And then once a internal temperature of 125 degrees uh, Celsius was reached, I pulled it out and I let it rest for about seven minutes. And then I sliced it and that's how the interior of the steak looked. And yeah. So I apologize that I can't take any questions today. I have a exam at the same time as this presentation, but I thank you for listening to my presentation today. All right, thank you, bye.